Ladies and gentlemen, hi, Matthew Harden here. Gonna do something a little bit different today. While we would normally do G-Shock videos on the uh, weekend, I wanted to maybe produce a quick video to help others who might be trying to look at getting 4K video in terms of what they're creating. I've been experimenting with this for a while, different devices to help me create the actual video. I've utilized my daughter's Sony ZV-1F, which I bought for her, but she doesn't really use. I've been using things like, you know, Logitech Brio 4Ks. I've even been trying a range of different phones. And recently I found myself getting back into the Apple ecosystem and using iPhones again. And one of the things that I saw people doing was using those iPhones for content creation. Now, I will tell you, I'm not necessarily a professional content creator, but I do try and work on ways to make my videos better to be able to get to a high level of quality. And I find myself on the road. I've got a MacBook M1 Max, I've got an iPhone, I've got connectivity. So I started to experiment with tools like NDI to be able to get a live stream of 4K from my phone directly to my MacBook and then record there in OBS and QuickTime and you know different types of setups. However, one of the challenges that I came across with that particular setup was that with NDI, it required you to sort of connect your device via network. And I guess that's the, uh, the, the point of it is to make it network accessible. Um, but I found that when I travel, the Wi-Fi or the network access I have is largely inconsistent. Sometimes it's great and everything works nicely, but then sometimes that network is fairly congested and the stream, especially when you're doing 4K capture, doesn't work out too well. And so that was impacting the quality of what I could use the phone for. I mean, I use the phone not just to record video, but I sometimes use it as a feed into Teams when I work. And you could argue, Matt, what's the point of 4K in a Teams call because it probably doesn't even render that high. And well, it's just because I can. And I enjoy pushing the technology to the limits. So I needed to find a solution that would allow me to get 4K from a camera stream directly into my MacBook to utilize uh, and not have any sort of reliance on a particular network. So I searched and searched, came across eventually a piece of software called Telecast. And Telecast is a piece of software that runs on your iPhone and on the MacBook and it delivers a feed directly into your uh, Mac. And then that source can also show up inside of OBS as what we're using right here. Now I've got it working, but let me tell you, it wasn't working so well. But first, let me show you how the app actually works. Okay, so what we've got here is just a snippet of my screen. I have a very large screen, so if I did a full screen capture, you wouldn't be able to see so well. But on the right, you see OBS. On the left, you'll actually see the Telecast app running on Mac OS. And this is connected up to a iPhone mini, an old one, which we don't use anymore, uh, which is sitting up here at the top. And what I can do here is I can use the device, I can choose the camera, I can use ultra wide or wide angle. So if I go ultra wide, uh, you'll be able to see how far back this actually goes. I can go back to wide angle, which is where we see here and, uh, and recording. Um, I can change the frame rate. I can turn the torch on or off. So I guess I've got like a light. You can see that light changing. We can do preview on device. I can turn it off so it doesn't impact the screen. And I've got this running on multiple cameras. So if I choose to do my other phone, what we should see here is the different angle. And this can be fed directly into uh, the actual applications themselves. So this would be fed into OBS. And then with obviously with an iPhone 15 Pro Max, right? There's a lot more options here. Right, I can do dual camera, telephoto camera, you know, a lot of different options as compared to the iPhone mini red, if we change it there, and you can only see a few of the, uh, the different uh, cameras that are available because only two cameras versus three cameras. So it's a very cool app. You know, there's lots you can do here. You can make sure you've got lighting on, focus on, so auto focus, uh, manual focus, auto white balancing, lots of different things and it only connects 
via USB directly into the camera to ensure that you're getting the best performance out of it. Um, so cool feature, uh, cool way to capture high quality content into your OBS. So what you'd see there is that that feed coming into the Telegram app and it should be something I could just drag directly into OBS. And the idea was you would add in a new uh, video source, a new video capture device and that would feed into your OBS. But every time I looked down for the device, the, the Telecast app wasn't necessarily showing up and I kept, you know, uninstalling, reinstalling, I looked at plugins, I reinstalled OBS and it just wasn't coming up. And I was kind of felt like I'd found a solution, but it just didn't go the whole way. Now, of course, looking on the web, trying to find a solution, nothing really came up. I couldn't find anything. So I went back to the app on the app store and had a look at the feedback there. And there were a few people complaining that it wasn't quite working uh, as intended. Lo and behold, one of the people on the uh, on the review said they were really frustrated about it and you know they found a solution but there was a lack of documentation on the website my question was what was the solution they said they'd got it fixed but i didn't post what the solution actually was so i want to tell you about what that particular solution is here and what the issue is is that Mac OS Sonoma has changed the way it handles legacy video devices. And obviously, uh, tools like Telecast utilize legacy camera support. Now, of course, as it is, it's a small application, probably maintained by one or two people. It does a very good job for what it does. It doesn't do lots of different things, but feeds 4K over USB really, really well. Uh, so documentation was kind of lacking. Where I did find the documentation though was on the NDI website. And on the NDI website, they indicated that there were changes in macOS that stopped you from being able to get the input signal from those different devices into OBS. And so it pointed out to then an Apple support article and what they were talking about sounded very particularly like what I was seeing with the Telecast app. So I thought, let's go ahead and try it out. And really what it is, as you can see on the, uh, on the website here, is that you need to boot your MacBook into recovery mode, go into terminal, and essentially enable that legacy cam support. Now, the risk of doing that, obviously Mac and Apple itself doesn't do anything without reason, most cases. But what it's trying to do is to make sure that when a camera goes on, it will show you an indicator in your taskbar that says, hey, camera's actually recording. Now this legacy camera support circumvents that. So you won't actually see the, the video icon coming up. And that's kind of really all it is on the surface that I can actually see. So going into recovery, going into the terminal, rebooting or well, actually changing that 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 uh, uh, flag in the actual boot up and lo and behold I now have the glorious 4k telecast coming into my uh, my OBS so I'm really happy about this I'm hoping that this helps out other people because I couldn't find a solution for this and I'm hoping if you have tried using telecast and and thought about trying to record in 4k that potentially this solution will help you out as well. So I'll put all the links down below to some of the supporting articles, and I hope this helps you go and record awesome 4K video as well.